So we have a bit of news on the Oklahoma front. We gotta talk about it after the bump. Don't be cornering me. Hold up, time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh <laughs> What's up, Ken Folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step milk. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time. And today, I want to talk about Ty DeArmond coming out of the transport portal and Troy James going in. This is on the eve of all the kiddos returning to school. That would be across the country for the most part. College kiddos are going to start school on January 13th, which is why the news of Jamie Newman enrolling at Georgia is such a big deal. And today is the biggest transfer coup we have to report I really expect there to be some moving and shaking on the LSU and Arkansas front to say nothing of what Mike Leach is going to have to do over there at Mississippi State here relatively soon after the college football playoff national championship is over on Monday night. But for Oklahoma, we've continued to see some moving and shaking. Michael Jones went into the transfer portal last month. We've seen Troy James now go into the transfer portal. He is a defensive lineman. He was a three-star recruit out of Baton Rouge and out of coming out of Madison Prep. And he didn't really play a whole lot at Oklahoma. It was part of this vaunted 2017 class that has been responsible for a lot of the backbone of what OU has been able to accomplish this last year. Guys in that class include Justin Broyles, Trey Brown. We've still waited to see guys like Levi Draper ascend. Troy James was one of these defensive end types that we wanted to see play in Mike Stoops' three-man front. And it seems that he does not have a fit for what Alex Grinch is doing or there has been some disconnect because he didn't play in 2019, man. It's mostly like special team stuff in 2018. He even played a little like fullback or whatever in 2018. It was really weird what was going on with Troy James because it felt like he was going to be a great five technique or even perhaps just blow him up, try to move him inside because he came in at around 254. And the same position that Ronnie Perkins is playing today would have been the fit, I thought, for what Troy James could do. Same thing that Kenneth Mann was doing before he got injured. I really am not shocked to see this because we're seeing the kids that haven't played graduating. They want to go play somewhere, and I don't blame them for that. But even if they hadn't graduated and they haven't played, I've always said, go somewhere where you're going to have a good time. Go somewhere where you're going to be the man or as close to being the man as you possibly can. There's nothing wrong with doing what Tyler Tettleton did coming out of Norman North. Dude goes to Ohio, balls out, has a good time, comes back to Oklahoma as a GA, and he ended up in the NFL as an offensive analyst. Now, that's not for everybody, but I think it's for most. Now, there's also the news of Ty DeArmon coming out of the transfer portal after going in last month at Southern Methodist. Now, at Bowie, where he played for his father, Danny, he played everywhere, man. We're talking about safety, wide receiver, and even a little bit of quarterback. He can return kicks. Ty is an outstanding athlete at the time, number 54 athlete in the country. Now he's getting closer to home. He's going to be around home. He's going to be able to drive straight to his real home not too far away from where Southern Methodist is located. I'm not sure what he's going to play at SMU. Uh, he played safety at Oklahoma, was recruited to play safety at Oklahoma, didn't play any safety at Oklahoma, redshirted this season. But it'd be interesting to see what they ask him to do over there as they're having their own kind of turnover. And we know that with Rhett Lashley pulling the strings last year, they were one of the better offenses in the country. Shane Bouchelle was able to hit guys like James Prochet, we saw what Xavier was able to do with running back. And their DBs were also very, very good, not just for the American, but just in general. And with Rhett Lashley deciding to take the job at Miami, that means there was a void at offensive coordinator. I really want to see where he fits, but I like the pickup by Sonny Dykes. I like that he went in and took Ty DeArmond out. He is a coach's kid, means he understands scheme. He understands it at a molecular level. He wants to know what you want to do on both sides of the ball. He's going to be an outstanding special teams guy for you. And he has an opportunity to really work himself, not just into the fold at SMU, but become one of the class players in the American Conference. I believe in his talent and his ability that much. It's one of the reasons why, yeah, it sucks that he needed to leave Oklahoma, but if they're not going to play him, they're not going to play him. And you got to go where you need to be able to play. Now, that said, there's going to be a few more changes coming for Oklahoma, but I don't see them coming right now. It's going to be closer to the summer after we see the kiddos find out where they stand on the depth chart with 15 spring practices coming up in March, spring game in April, that sorts of thing. They're getting into winter training right now. The 2020 early enrollees are en route and arriving in Norman. Josh Ellison's been tweeting about going out there. Of course, Perrion Winfrey's been tweeting about going out there. We know Andrew Rame is on his way. They're all moving in, and I'm excited to see 
what they look like at the spring game. Being an early enrollee is still a really great advantage to have if you want to play as a true freshman in the season. Now, this is going to be interesting because you get all three of your junior college signings on campus, which is huge. It means Justin Harrington could probably come in and play some strong safety nickel for you, and we know that both of those positions are positions of need for Oklahoma. Didn't have the best out of Brendan Buki Radley Howes at the nickel safety position. DeLaren Turner Yell was an eighth man in the box and a great tackler when he could wrap people up, put them on the ground. The defense played well, but he was more of a liability in coverage. And we could say the same to a degree about Pat Fields and his speed. He's so cerebral that he's able to make up for a lot of what he doesn't have athletically. But you want it bigger, longer, rangier, faster cornerbacks and safeties. And that's what you got if you're Alex Grinch. Now, I want to see what Bryson Washington can add to this. I wonder if they're going to leave Woody Washington at safety. That's playing him out of position. You know that I'm a big fan of playing a kid at the position he was recruited from. Meaning, if you played corner in high school, you should probably be playing corner in college. If you played safety in high school, you probably should be playing safety in college. In many cases, the learning curve is so steep for even learning a position that is adjacent to yours that it sometimes does not translate to college. Like, take for instance, Kenneth Murray Jr., was an outside linebacker and a pass rushing type player that they asked to play middle linebacker in Mike Stoops' scheme and will linebacker, they called him Mike, in Alex Grinch's scheme, but it took him a couple of years to learn it and his physical traits are so magnificent that he was able to really shine in his third year as a dude that would just chase guys down in the backfield, elite speed, elite closing speed, and a great tackler, but not a great instinctual fit. Deshaun White is a better instinctual fit, but he's also a guy that moved from outside linebacker to inside. These are all things that I'm taking into account when I look at what Alex Grinch is going to run out and why guys like Perrion Winfrey, and Josh Ellison, and Josh, Justin Harrington are such big deals. Perrion Winfrey told me he plans to come in and play the role that Neville Gallimore played, and that's what they need him to do. And you really need him to ascend if Oklahoma's defense is going to be as good as it was last year or better than it was last year, particularly up front. It was one of the strengths of the OU defense because Neville Gallimore was such a freak in the middle. But we all know Neville Gallimore is a physical freak, which is a guy with 4'7 speed at 335. You know, this is a guy that squatted 800 pounds. He makes Bruce Feldman's super freak list every year that he was at Oklahoma. But thinking about what this means for the kiddos that are going in, the kiddos that are going out, we all know the transport portal is a way of life, so much so that 247 has built an entire website adjacent around it and a Twitter account for it because this is also the time for which kids are saying, hey, look, I have an option now to go and not be held back by my coaches if I want to leave. Like, that's one of the things I loved about this. Famously, Bill Snyder denied one of his wide receivers 30 opportunities to go and play other places. Now, thinking about Ty Armand and Troy James, I think you get the scholarships back, but you won't get them back until the summer. You also would get Michael Jones' scholarship back, but you got to believe that's gone to Theo Howard. And the scholarship distribution chart is really in flux right now. I hope to sit down and really take a good look at that and see what Oklahoma has. But on the offensive side of the ball, getting Creed Humphrey back to solidify your offensive line is a big win. You're only going to have five wide receivers with experience going into 2020, but they're all very, very talented, and Theo Howard is going to help you tremendously with that. On the other side of the ball, you get Troy James' scholarship back, but would you be able to go get another defensive lineman? And I know most people are always saying, hey, where are the five-star defensive linemen in the transfer portal? Well, first of all, show me the five-star defensive linemen. Show me where they're going to school. And then show me that they're not playing. Show me that they're unhappy. You're not going to be able to do it because it is such a position of need for everybody. And a five-star defensive lineman changes the course of your football team, even more than a quarterback for me. Because if I have a defensive lineman that I can build a defense around, I'm always going to be in a football game. I'm always going to have an opportunity to win. If I can stop you from scoring, or more to the point, if I can get the ball back as the defense and go score, you know what we're doing here. And I always say defense is the only unit on the field that can stop you from scoring and go score themselves. And if you can build that kind of defense at Oklahoma, you have a better opportunity to do what this program has not done, which is go and win a college football playoff. They're looking for their sixth straight league title, but I don't think that winning the Big 12 championship is that big a deal anymore, especially if you'll go into the college football playoff and get sunned 
by the SEC champ and go in there and, and give up a 17-point lead to Georgia and go in there and get your head handed to you by Clemson. It just doesn't help you, right? Now, what is Oklahoma going to look like this year? I think they're going to be the most talented team that Lincoln Riley's ever had, but they may need a year of experience before they can really be elite. 2021 is the year, but 2020 could be the year because this is Oklahoma and they're just that talented, and we never know how it's going to come together until we see it out on the field. And this is going to be interesting because with Tanner Mordecai and Spencer Rattler likely to be the signal callers, I really feel good about what they have at quarterback. Oklahoma's going to go back to throwing the ball down the field. We've all seen Spencer Rattler and what he's been able to do, and all he's done during his time off is throw behind the back passes 40 yards, throw a football over the mountains. I mean, we're talking about a kid that threw 69, 71 yards just chucking it. I mean, they're watching that kid in his jump passes. You're like Pat Mahomes. Eat your heart out. It's been fantastic to see. But the portal, way of life, we'll be okay. All right, that's it for me. Deuces.